everybody, welcome back to some more Pongor Stormfiend here with a uh another uh part of the champion roll god. So last time we talked about assassins and what they did. Um moving on now we're on to fighters. Now, what do fighters do? They're basically your first line of defense and offense. They're sort of like a tank, except that they are not as disruptive in a team fight and they do more damage generally and basically what they tend to do is they just they will either rush in and kill whoever they can get to in a team fight or they will protect the uh, marksman or the attack damage carry depending on how you prefer so there's a lot of variation here I don't agree with some of these being under fighter but I see why they are. So I'm going to go over very briefly the champions here because there's a lot of them and I don't want the video to run too long. But I'll sort of give you an idea of what they do. So the first one we have is Aatrox. He's attack damage. He, um, his abilities include um, he has a Guardian's Angel passive type ability, which means when he dies, he gets revived. It has a cooldown, of course. He's a very um, sustainy champion, which means that he gets his health back very easily in lane or outside of lane. And he also brings a, a, a knock-up as a form of CC as well as a mini slow. So he's, he's pretty good. Moving on from that, we have Darius. Darius... Um, <clears throat> is has one of the strongest executes in the game and uh, it's in the form of Noxian Guillotine which does a does a ton of true damage. Uh he also he does a lot of mixed damage too in lane. Um he's one of the few champions that can build almost purely tank and do really really well uh as a fighter and still have a fair amount of damage. Uh the main utilities he brings to a group are he has a he has a pull a small conal pull, and he also brings a slow and attack speed uh, debuff. So, pretty good champion. Uh, one con to him is he is very kiteable. He's also attack damage. So, moving on from uh, Darius, we have Deanna. Deanna is a ability power champion. Um, I would list her more as an assassin than a fighter, but she is very good at both. She's very bulky or robust if you prefer uh, for a for a assassin but she excels at jumping onto the enemy carry um, her ultimate similar to Akali's lets her dash to the target she also has an AoE pull and what it does is it pulls all enemies in the area to her she also has a shield as well which gives her a lot of it gives her her main robustness um, moving on from her we have Dr. Mundo um, Dr. Mundo is an attack damage uh, fighter. He brings no CC um, except for a very minor slow. Now, the thing that Mundo has going for him is that his ultimate lets him regenerate a ton of health, and he passively regenerates a ton of health. He also has a ability that when activated gives him a ton of attack damage, so he gets a lot of attack damage for not investing in it. Finally, his uh, last two assets are his cleaver that he throws, which is a skill shot, but it does a percent of their current damage, and it's a, a current health, and it's a very big chunk. And his W also gives him a lot of CC immunity as well as AC da uh, uh, AP damage. So, moving on for Dr. Mundo, we have Fiora. Fiora is a champion I don't like to say is a fighter, but I wouldn't say she's an assassin either. She really doesn't fit a role. Um, she's more like a melee carry. Um, she's attack damage. Uh, what does she do? Well, she has a really strong innate uh, attack speed boost. Her, she also has a dash so she can get to a target and she can reactivate it a second time. She has something called repost and what this does, it lets her reflect a auto attack back at the champion. So it's very, very strong. Finally, her ultimate lets her jump around between targets, dealing a fair amount of damage, but also making her untargetable. So, very, very great champion. Uh, moving on from Fiora, we have Gangplank. 
Um, Gangplank's a pirate, enough said. He's an attack damage uh, champion. Now, he has a really unique ability in the form of parlay. And what this does is that uh, it is a range target uh, physical damage dealing ability. But it, include, it has the ability to apply both on hit effects and crit. So it's a very interesting uh, thing. I would list uh, Gangplank is a champion that can go several ways, but he definitely fits the fighter role very well. Um, some other things he can do is he has an innate slow. He has a uh, an activated ability that gives his uh, team attack speed and movement speed. He has a global ultimate that does damage in an AOE and slows, and he has probably one of the best abilities in the game in the form of remove scurvy. What this does is Gangplank heals himself for a small amount and then removes all CCs from himself. So very, very good. Then we have Garen. Um, Garen is, I'd say, probably a good definition of what a fighter is. Um, he's an attack damage fighter. He brings to the table a silence. He has a lot of just innate robustness. Um... He also has an execute ability, so he's a very, very good fighter. He's very hard to lock down as well because he has a lot of uh, slow and snare removal as well as just CC immunity. Or not immunity, but reducers, rather. So, very good champion. Then we have Hecarim. Hecarim's a really strong initiator. I'd say he's more of a tank than a fighter. But, that's me. Um, so, what does Hecarim do? Well, he's an attack damage carry. He has a... An ability that gives him a lot of sustain. He also has a movement speed boost for initi initiating. And it also knocks his enemy back away from him. And then finally he has an ultimate that lets him charge through uh, anything in his way for a short distance. And then upon arrival fears enemies uh, in the area. He also is immune to CC while charging. So very strong champion. Very, very good. Then we have Aurelia. Aurelia, I say, blurs the line between assassin and fighter. She does build fightery, but she excels at charging into the enemy lines and getting to a squishy target. And the reason she does this is because of her passive, which reduces um, CC on her based on the amount of champions around. Very interesting passive, very strong. Uh, in addition to that, she also has a dash, true damage, and sustain. And finally, she has a stun or a slow. It's a stun if the enemy you use it on has more health than you, and it's a slow if they don't. Finally, she has a her ultimate lets her shoot up blades in a straight line, and they heal her for uh, an amount of damage dealt. So she's a really good fighter, very good at excels at getting squishies. Then we have Jax. Um, Jax is a very uh, innately tanky champion. Uh, he excels again at getting to squishies. He's an he's an attack damage champion, although he scales a lot with ability power too. He's a very mixed champion. Um, so what does Jax do? Well, he has a he has an activated ability that lets him dodge all incoming uh, ability uh, attack damage attacks like auto attacks, and he also reduces AOE while it's up. And then after a delay or when it's reactivated, he will stun all enemies around him. And then in addition to that, he also has a leap, and his ultimate and his W give him a lot of burst damage. They act like uh, his ultimate every third hit does a ton of damage, and then his W activates to give him damage on his next hit. So he has a lot of unpredictable burst. Then we have Jace. Jace is a very interesting champion in that he switches between melee and range throughout the fight. I would say he's definitely a fighter, although he's a little weird, I don't know, like I'd say he fits the fighter uh, persona, I don't know if I'd put him in the fighter uh, role though. Um, so basically, he can, he's very good at poking and harassing. In addition to that, he also brings a knockback as well as an AoE slow to the table, as well as an AoE speed boost for his team, so very interesting champion. Next, we have Kale. I wouldn't put Kale as fighter personally, but again, that's me. So, what does Kale do? Uh, Kale does a lot of AoE damage. Um, in addition to that, she brings a really strong single target uh, slow and burst ability, and also a heal and speed boost for her allies. And then her ultimate is called Divine Intervention, 
which lets her put a shield on Atari that makes them immune to damage for a short uh, duration. However, they can still be CC. That's a little thing that a lot of people don't know. Next we have Lee Sin. I'd say Lee Sin is a good example of a fighter. Um, what Lee Sin ex excels at is uh, leaping into the enemy team and just disrupting them, but not so much as a like a normal tank would do. So what does Lee Sin uh, abilities do? Well, his Q is a skill shot, and then if it hits a target, he can reactivate it again to leap to the target and deal a fair amount of damage. His W gives him a shield, and it's a shield that he da he can either put on himself or himself and an ally, and the shield lets him dash to his ally if he uh, uses it on them. Then his E is, uh, it is a AoE damage ability, and then you can reactivate it to also slow uh, uh, enemies' movement speed and attack speed. His shield also, once you use it, can be reactivated again to give him a fair amount of life steal. And finally, his ultimate is an AoE knock. Uh, it's it's a knockback that if the enemies get hit by the target knockback, they will also get knocked. Knockback or stunned? I think it's stunned. Let's find out. Uh, okay, it knocks them into the air. There, so it's a knock up if it hits people. There you go. Mordekaiser. Don't know if I put Mordekaiser as a fighter, um, but again, that's me. Uh, so what does Mordek sell at? Well, Mord is innately robust as well because he has a shield. That's his passive. Basically, when he deals damage, he gets a temporary shield. He also brings an AoE damage ability in the form of his W that also gives magic resistant armor. Uh, and then his other two abilities just deal a fair amount of AoE damage. Finally, his ultimate lets him steal a, a big chunk of people's life and then gives it to him. It also means that when they die, he gets a ghost clone of them if his ult's still on them. So, very good fight, uh, champion. I don't know if I'd put him as a fighter. Nasus. I'd say Nasus leans more towards tank than fighter, but that's me. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of the tools for tank, but he's innately robust enough that I'd say he's a tank, and he builds tank. So, what does Nasus do? Um, Nasus, has, his main ability is Siphoning Strike, and what it does is it, it slowly gets stronger and stronger over the course of the game if you last hit with it. He has probably one of the strongest slows in the game in the form of Wither, which reduces uh, movement speed and attack speed by up to 90%, I do believe. Uh, it doesn't actually say, but it's very large. like It's the strongest in the game. But it's not the best slow in the game, uh, I would say. Uh, he brings a AoE uh, minor damage ability that also shreds armor. And finally, his ultimate makes him really, really tanky. And gives him health as well as dealing percentage damage, increasing his damage by a ton. His passive gives him a ton of innate life steal as well. So, moving on to that, we have Olaf. Olaf is a champion that I would put as fighter. Uh, he, his ultimate gives him a fair amount of robustness. Uh, he excels at kind of just running into someone and beating them. Uh, he has a lot of innate sustain, and he does, he also has a true damage nuke. His ultimate also makes him immune to CC for the duration, so, yeah, very good ultimate. Uh, that's basically Olaf. Olaf is pretty simplistic. Now we have Pantheon. I would say Pantheon leans more towards assassin than fighter, but I do see why he's under fighter. So what does Pantheon do? Well, he has a medium range uh, leap ability that when he collides with his target, it stuns them and gives him his passive. And what his passive passive is is Aegis of uh, what is it? Aegis of Aegis of protection. And what this does is that the next basic attack against him that does over I think like 40 damage just automatically gets blocked and doesn't do anything. So very strong passive, and his Q is a poke ability. Which is boat medium range. You throw a spear. It does a fair amount of physical damage. Um, and then he has his E is a channeled ability in a sh small cone. And it does damage to enemies. It does more damage to champions. But the big thing about this ability is that when enemies get below 15%, the passive on this ability is that Pantheon's ability to always crit on them. Including his spear shot. He's, and that makes killing people very, very easy. 
Finally, he has a fairly large range uh, AoE ult that lets him jump to a target location on the map. It's not global, but it's fairly large. So, moving on from that, we have Poppy. Now, what does Poppy do? Um, Poppy is... I'd say Poppy's more of an assassin than a fighter, but that's debatable. Uh, she is really, really robust. Like, ridiculously robust. Innately. First off, uh, what she excels at is single target bursting. Um, and she does this with her Q, which does a ton of percent damage. Uh, in addition to that, her W actively gives her attack damage and R... R is it attack damage and armor? No, it's movement speed and armor. And it just makes her innately robust. Her ultimate lets her single out a target. And what it does is it puts a shield on her and marks the target. Only the target can damage and CC her, but Poppy gets increased damage against that target. So it lets her choose a target and get to them, and they basically no one can stop her, except that target. In addition to that, she has the best passive in the game, in my opinion. And this passive is called uh, Valiant Fighter. Now what this does is that whenever Poppy would take more than 10% of her health as damage, she reduces it by 50%. That is ridiculous. Like, ridiculously good. Um, so it lets Poppy be very deceptively tanky. Anyways, moving on from Pop, or uh, one of the cons to Poppy uh, before I move on is the fact that her laning phase is so awful. Like, really, really bad. Anyways, moving on from her, we have Renekton. Um, Renekton is, I'd say, definitely excels at being a fighter. He also is very good at getting to a target. Um, so what does Renekton do? Well, he uses a rage mechanic, which just makes his ability stronger. It's something you'll have to learn if you ever want to really get into Renekton. But his Q ability lets him deal damage in an area around him. Mm. His W is a, a, a fairly hurtful stun and damage ability. His E is a dash that lets him dash a second time if he hits an enemy with it. And if he has enough rage, it also will shred armor. Finally, his ultimate gives him uh, AoE magic damage as well as increasing, uh, makes him more robust by giving him a ton of free health. So, fairly good champion. Very, very nice. Moving on from that, we have Riven next. Riven is, again, another champion that's a very good example of a fighter. Um, she's very frontline-y and very disruptive. And she does this uh, because of her kit, which is very mobile oriented as well as just mini CCs. So what does Riven do? Uh, her Q is a short range dash ability. She leaps to the location and does damage. And she re can reactivate this two more times to leap forward a little bit more and also deal damage. And then on the third strike, she also will knock enemies up. In addition to this, the third strike can also get her over small walls. So it's good for being safe. Um, her W ability is a sh is a very uh, short duration stun in a small area around her, also deals damage. And her E lets her dash and get uh, a small shield as well. In addition to this, her ultimate gives her a ton of free attack damage and an execute type ability uh, for the duration. And then her passive also, uh, every time she uses an ability, gives her a stack of it. And these stacks slowly disappear. They're like a short duration type thing, but they let you deal extra attack damage on each swing as well. Each auto attack. So it's a combination of like using your abilities and auto attacking between them. She's a very fun champion to play. Moving on from Riven, we have Rumble. Now, a, a Rumble's an ability power fighter. Um, I would say he does fit into fighter just the way he builds, and he's kind of innately tanky as well. Or robust, I guess. So, what does Rumble do? Well, he has one of the few abilities that lets him silence himself in the game in the form of his passive. And basically, he has his heat meter. And every time he uses the ability, the heat meter goes up. Uh, if you keep it between a certain point, it will give you increased damage. But if you push it to the max, it will silence you for a fairly lengthy period of time. So... Uh, his abilities, his Q, lets him deal AoE damage in front of him. It's a channel cone. He can also auto-attack and stuff while doing it, so it's very fun. And he can also move. 
His W gets him a sh gives him a small shield as well as a short burst of speed. His E is a short range skill shot that lets him throw the harpoon. He could shoot tw two of these before it goes on cooldown. And finally, his ultimate is a fairly long range line uh, ability, and what it does is let you drag a line to in the radius and these sort of like mine thingies will fall and they deal damage as well as slow enemies in the area. They also deal an initial burst to any enemies hit by them while they're falling. He's a very fun and strong champion. Moving on from that we have Shyvana. Shyvana is definitely another good example of a fighter. Um, she excels at just diving into the enemy team. Uh, what Some of the tools she has to help her do this is that her passive makes her a little bit robust. In the form of giving her free armor and magic risk. Her Q uh, lets her deal two strikes at once with one auto attack. And they apply on hit effects and stuff twice as well. And she gets a ton of life steal from that as well. Her W is an AoE ability, uh, AoE uh, damage around her. It lets her, it's just a passive ability when she activates it. Deals damage around her. And then also gives her a movement speed boost. Her E shoots out a fireball that deals uh, damage and then marks them. And if they get hit while they're marked, it deals uh, percent damage to them. And finally, her ultimate turns her into a giant dragon, which doubles her passive's benefit. And then also gives all her abilities additional effects. Her fireball it becomes a cone. Her W uh, lets her leave a trail while she has it on. And then her E cleaves everyone. So very, very effective at just diving in and dealing damage. Moving on from her, we have Sion. Uh, Sion, I don't know if I'd put him as fighter so much as mage, but uh, you can build him AP or AD. I guess AD would fall under fighter. Um, so what do his abilities do? Well, his uh, his Q is a um, is a target stun, and it's a fairly lengthy stun. Deals a moderate amount of damage. His W gives him a shield that after a short duration uh, or being activated again after a short delay deals damage to enemies around him and pops the shield. Um, his E is called Enrage. It gives him a ton of free attack damage as well as hurting him because of having it turned on. It's a toggle ability. Um, the attack damage is a ton though, however. Finally, his ultimate gives him a ton of free attack speed and life steal. It also heals his allies around him for a small amount as well. So very, very good uh, abilities. Uh, you don't see a lot of Sion, unfortunately. Uh, and I think that's a shame. I think it has to do with the fact he's not a very visually appealing champion. So moving on from him, we have Skarner. I think Skarner's a tank, not a fighter, but that's me. Uh, so what does Skarner do? Well, first off, Skarner is a champion that doesn't really build attack damage or ability power. He just builds straight tank. And he excels at disrupting and peeling. And what is peeling? Well, peeling is basically keeping people off a champion. So what? how does Skarner uh, accomplish this? Well, his Q is spammable. It deals damage in an area around him. And then if you hit, uh, if you use it twice in a row, the second strike will start slowing from that point on, and subsequent strikes as well. Um, his W gives him a, uh, a, sh a fairly moderate shield, as well as giving him attack speed and movement speed while it holds. His E is a lackluster ability, it just a skill shot that deals a small amount of magic damage, as well as applies a mark to the enemies that heals you for a very minor amount if you hit them, and it triggers the mark and disappears. So it's not that great. Finally, his ultimate is a targeted ability. It suppresses the target, and then you can drag them with you for the duration. You can also Q while dragging them. So, you can Q to deal damage as well as drag them away from the enemy team. He excels at getting one target and pulling them back to his team for them to decimate, or just locking down a target so you can burst them. Moving on from him, we have Trundle. Trundle is a very good example of a fighter as well. Excels at jumping in, although he's very good at charging into the squishy section. And he does this because his W ability is a large area of effect that gives him attack speed as well as movement speed and CC reduction while he's in it. So you always want to fight enemies in this. In addition to that, his E puts this pillar from the ground that slows enemies around it and the pillar itself can block paths. His E ability lets him deal damage to a target as well as steal some of their attack damage and give it to Trundle. 
Finally, his ultimate lets him deal percent damage to a target as well as sap more health over the course of the duration and steal armor magic resist from them. Trundle also gets the health he steals from this as well. So Trundle's a very, very good champion. I think Trundle's a very underrated champion as well. I think he's a lot stronger than people give him credit for. Next we have Trindamir. I say Trindamir falls into the same thing as Fiora. She's more, he's more of a melee carry than a fighter. But I guess the question is where do you draw that line? Anyways, Trindamir excels at just diving in and wrecking people. If the enemy team has light CC, Trindamir is very scary. Trindamir gets very scary very quickly if he does not get shut down. And the reason he gets very scary is because his passive gives him a ton of free critical strike. His Q gives him free attack damage. His W gives him um, gives him a slow as well as a massive attack damage redu reduction on enemies hit. Um, it's a shout and it does it hits everyone in a fairly lengthy radius. His Q also heals him if he activates, but it empties his uh, Fury pool, which he also runs on the Fury similar to Renekin. Finally, he uh, his E lets him. Spin a short uh, short distance. He can get over walls and stuff with this, so it makes him very easy to escape or initiate. Finally, his ultimate, when activated, makes him immune to dying for a short duration. So he's very good at just diving in and killing targets. Moving on from him, we have Udir. Um, Udir is another champion that I think excels at being a uh, at, at being a fighter. Basically, Udir doesn't have an ultimate. He has four stances. And normally you play Udyr one of two ways, which is Phoenix Stance or Tiger Stance. Tiger Stance goes more attack damage oriented. Phoenix Stance goes more on hit and tank oriented. They both go tanky though. And what Udyr does to accomplish his goal as a fighter is he has a mini stun in the form of bear form. What this does is when you activate it and while you remain in it, it lets you uh, hit a target and stun them for a short duration. And then they can't be re-stunned by you for a couple seconds. But you can basically bounce between targets, stunning them. Uh, his other abilities include AOE in the form of his uh, in the form of his uh, Phoenix stance, um, and then his his Tiger stance gives him a fair amount of just single target burst damage. And then finally, his Turtle stance, which is W, gives him a moderate amount of uh, life steal, and it also gives him a shield. Moving on from Udir, we have Vi. Vaya is a very fun champion, although she ex uh, what she does is she excels at getting to a squishy target and bursting them down. Um, what makes Vi very good at what she does is uh, her Q is a charge-up ability that gives her a uh, dash that increases over the charge-up period. And then when she arrives at the location, she'll deal damage to enemies there, as well as knock them back. Her W is a due to do what is her W denting blows. What this does is every third strike Vi will deal additional physical damage in the form of percent damage to the target and also shred their armor. Her E is excessive force, I do believe. Yes. And what this does is it activates and then makes her next attack deal additional damage as well as be conal. But the cone hits all enemies behind the initial target, so Keep that in mind. It also implies denting blows. And she can use excessive force twice before it goes on cooldown. Um, her ultimate is Assault and Battery. And what this does is she, she singles out a target, charges to them, and then uh, grabs them, leaps up, and slams them into the ground. Um, there's no way to avoid this ability. If you blink o away from her, she will continue to charge you until she reaches you. She also cannot be CC'd or killed during this. If you try to kill her during this, she will stay at 1 HP and then die shortly thereafter. Uh, moving on from Vi, we have Volibear. Uh, I'd say Volibear falls into Fighter. Uh, he's a very robust champion. He, ex he excels at building just pure HP. Um, some of the things that Volibear does is his... Q lets him get gives him a movement speed, and then the next enemy he attacks for a short duration will be flinged over his back, similar to Cinch's fling. And then he also has an AOE slow, and as well as the sort of execute ability. Although I don't think his execute's that good, but it is an execute. Finally, his ultimate gives him AOE damage, 
He's a very interesting champion. He's very uh, robust. So uh, his passive also, when he hits a certain life percent, will start healing him for a ton of damage. Although once it does, it goes on cooldown for a duration. So keep that in mind. Moving on from Volley, we have Warwick. Warwick is a champion that is very innately sustainy, uh, which gives him a lot of robustness. Um, Warwick uh, is very good at singling out a target and locking them down, although he's very easy to interrupt while doing this. Um, some of the abilities Warwick has are um, his Q ability does percent health damage or flat magic damage depending on which is stronger. His W is an attack speed burst for himself as well as allies in the area around him. His E gives him movement speed on injured targets below 50% health. And finally his ultimate is infinite duress. He leaps on a target and suppresses them for a short duration. Does a ton of damage to them as well as heals a ton for himself. So he excels at jumping on a target and locking them down. As well as chasing down targets. Next we have Wukong. Um, Wukong is a very, very good champion. He's a very strong initiator. And uh, what Wukong does, uh, to help him do what he does, is he has a dash ability that gets him to his target as well as gives him an attack speed boost. His Q ability is a single on next hit ability that just does physical damage as well as shreds a ton of armor. His W gives his, stealths him and then leaves a decoy in his place. Um, so he's very good at sneaking up to an enemy or getting away. Finally, his ultimate is a AoE knockup as well as a fairly significant amount of damage. So it makes uh, Wukong a very strong initiator or follow-up and lets him lock down a target. Moving on from Wukong, we have Xin Zhao. Um, what Xin Zhao does is that... Uh, he excels at jumping into the enemy team. I'd put him more as a tank than a fighter myself, but that's me. Um, he has very good single target burst damage as well as a fair amount of CC. So the first thing he has is his passive, which lets him shred his his target uh, armor. His Q um, lets him knock enemies up after three strikes as well as give him uh, gives him a ton of uh, damage. His W gives him an attack speed boost as well as sustain. His E is a dash as well as a slow. And his E also applies his passive to shred the target's armor. Finally, his ultimate does percent damage to all enemies around him. Knocks enemies that aren't marked by his passive, which is only your current target away. Also gives him armor and magic resist for a short duration. So he is very, very strong at initiating like Wukong. Finally, we have Yorick. Yorick's probably the weirdest champion of the bunch in that he's interesting. Basically, Yorick has these minions called ghouls, and all of his abilities spam them. They're very low health, and they die after a short duration, but each ghoul does something different. Um, his, e, his Q is a next, on next hit ability, does a moderate amount of physical damage, as well as summons a, spect uh, summons a spectral ghoul. The Spectral Ghoul does a fair amount of damage, and uh, his Q also gives him a movement speed of boost after he hits an enemy with it. His W uh, is a sh medium range uh, area of effect ability. It summons a Pestilent Ghoul that deals damage when it initially arrives, and then also will attack enemies. It prioritizes champions. It also slows enemies near to it. His E is called Ghoul uh, is Omen of Famine, and what it does is it it's a targeted ability, medium range, deals damage to the target and summons a, a, a ghoul of famine. And this ghoul of famine will attack enemies and heal Yorick for an amount. Yorick is a very sustaining champion in lane as well as very effective at harassing enemies. Finally, his ultimate is Omen of Death. Um, target ability, it summons a revenant of the target. Um, it's used on friendly allies. And the Revenant is basically similar to Mordekaiser's Ghost in that it will attack and stuff. Uh, it's best to use it on your uh, ADC. Uh, what happens though, if the if the target dies while the Revenant is still up, they will be resurrected and be able to fight for a short duration before expiring. So York's a very interesting champion. 
Anyways, I hope this gives you an idea of the different fighters. Again, the fighter's role is basically to either protect your squishies or dive into their team and kill their squishies or just kill anyone. You're the front line uh, fighter. You're the first, uh, first offense and first defensive target. Or champion, I guess. Or member of your team. Anyways, I hope this video helps and I will see you all next time. Uh, see ya.